Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Huckabee, and welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I'm delighted to have as my guest today Dr. Brenda Jefferson. She's a minister, mother, songwriter, and author. She will tell us about her life's journey, which started with overcoming a very traumatic childhood, an abusive first marriage, and then the heartbreak of losing her son to the prison system. We'll talk about her latest single, Lamb of God, and explore her new book, Praise Him, while you wait. I really do believe you'll enjoy hearing her story. Let's get Hi everyone. I am Nicole and welcome to Con- Hi everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. My guest today is Dr. Brenda Jefferson. She's a yes. minister, mother, songwriter, author, and so much more. Dr. Jefferson, I'm delighted to have you as my guest today. Welcome. I am so delighted to be your guest and thank you for having me. It's a blessing. Absol- absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, you have quite the story to tell. Yes. Um, you- Beautiful books, beautiful music Mm -hmm. that you make, but much of it, I suspect, came from when it all began for you as a child, some of the trauma that you went through, uh, a harsh first marriage, and then losing your son to the prison system. All of those things probably have led you to be able to make some beautiful music, write an incredible book, and then to deliver a message I feel would be one of hope to yes. those who hear it. Tell me a little yes. bit about yourself and your journey. Well, my journey started at a young uh, age, a young kid, and uh, my mother had a uh, abusive uh, marriage. And I went into, I got married at 17. My mother died at 17 mm. uh, when I was 17 years old. So I had a, a really traumatic life uh, coming up. So I, then after I married, my first marriage, he was abusive and uh, drugs and whole works. And I just asked, you know, I knew that it had to be a bad one when I ended up like my mother. I got married to um, my husband now, which is a wonderful, wonderful man. He's great in ministry. And I'm just, you know, working side by side with him. So he could bless me. And I know that I tell him all the time to, with you, no matter what your childhood looks like, no matter what your life looks like, you can always turn it around. Positive about it. Not, never give up. And that's my motto, never give up. How do you feel that your faith played into you never giving up? I assume that's what sustained you. I couldn't have made it without knowing God and knowing the word of God. So knowing that, you know, he was there with me, he said, I, now I'll never leave you, no, I will, will I forsake you. Yeah. He said, put this your tears upon me because I care for you. And I always kept that in my heart that he cares for me and I'm going to cast all my tears and I'm going through and I will cry to God and say, you know, I, I just, I need help. I don't know what to do. And I just wait for direction of God. So I know that when you know God and you have that relationship with him, you can have hope on the inside. You won't give up. So how did you move from knowing you needed this hope, this relationship with the Lord, to writing books? Tell me Uh, about your ministry and becoming a minister. How it happened was I, my husband, he travels a lot and have crusades. So we were on our way to Africa for a crusade. And I was praying on the plane, and I was asking God, I said, Lord, I said, you've given my husband so much, and I have nothing. I said, give me something that I I know only you could give me. And I think I picked up my tablet. I heard this this music in my ears, and I heard his voice say, I'm going to make you my pen of a written writer. He said, pick up your pens and you write it. And I started writing this song, Time of Reflection. And so, from that, I just started never having any background with music or anything. And I know all the God sort of given me that gift. I was going to say, that truly was a gift from God then, if you had not been on that journey before of music. So talk about the songwriting and how it fills your soul and the message that you hope it, it delivers to others. Well, uh, writing songs like the song I have out now is... Uh, on the charts, Lamb of God, Bless Lamb of God. And that song I wrote in a time of my ball, in a time of being down in my spirit about my son yeah. and wondering how can uh, uh, 
my son uh, ended up like that. And you feel like I'm being a good mother and I plead yes. everything. Why is my son going the wrong direction? So I wrote that song and it gave me peace. And now even to this day, I, I play the song and I listen to it and it just brings joy to my heart. So that songwriting gives me peace. That's my pass away time that mm-hmm. I can really feel like, you know, I'm spending that time with God. So the peace that has us all understanding, right? Yes, yes, yes. Do you, talking about your son there, elaborate more on what happened with him and, and how your faith is helping you get through this, continue to get through this, and maybe yes. something that you could share with others that maybe are going through the same thing. Okay. Well, uh, with my son, I feel like, you know, sometimes she just feel like when you're in ministry and you're just church and helping so many people, they feel like, you know, mom is just more to life. You know, we don't do anything. I want to do this. I want to experience this. And he got with some of his, um, uh, uh, Cousins that were doing wrong and mm-hmm. just got in the wrong path and they uh, yeah. got into drugs. And I was like, you know, I don't put it in you like that. But I tell any mother, don't give up on your son. Right. God gave me the book and my uh, book that I wrote, Praise and Why You Want It. Yeah. That, song, that book is a, a product of my son. When yeah. I was coming and I was asking God, you know, my son, I get my son and bring him home. And he said, Why are you I'm praising? Why are you praying? Why are you I'm waiting on me? He said, Praise me while I'm waiting. Yeah. And I learned mm. over the years to keep praising God. Even to this day, I sort of praise God. Thank pain. you for bringing my son home. Thank you for him being a man being a man of God. And he's learned his lessons. So I praise God every day when I'm waiting for my son to come home. Yes. You know, it's true. Um, we have to keep having hope and knowing yes. that God is with us always. And so we can never yes. give up on our loved ones or our friends no. or those who have, have gone astray because he yes. didn't give up on us. No, he didn't. But he that's didn't so hard, you know, as humans, yes. we're, we're made of flesh. So yes. that yes. is the difficult part. Yes. What would you say to those who have been have experienced the same thing. I mean, you seem to have handled it so well. I'm sure there were challenging times though. Oh, I, I, oh yes. It was very challenging times because a lot of times you think, uh, what did I do wrong? What, uh, what could I have done better to help my son not fall into that, uh, lifestyle? Yeah. And you question yourself and you say, you know, but I, I was a good mother. I didn't, you know, do anything to outside of God and I showed my son the uh, uh, ministry life and if, if you don't watch it you can get down in your spirit because you think well, you know, what could I have done so I had to leave okay. behind and know that he had to go down yes. that road so we can help so yes. many people but now how he's in prison he has this class ministry class that he's teaching men and I mean we've given him um, God's word and he just really they they love it. Sorry. And everybody that comes through there, them. my husband has a book called Lippity Big. And he ministers that book to those men that's going home. No. So it's, um, it's a blessing. So I know that when the scripture Romans 8 and 20 say all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I see I him that's it. working for my son Rua because he could have died he and died in the street. So God allowed him to go to prison to save his life. So it was a good thing. I was actually thinking the same thing as you were telling his story. And I was thinking, yeah. while prison is horrible, yes. his life was probably saved by being there. Yes. He found yes. the Lord and now he's yes. ministering to others. Yes. So he's doing God's work in yes, prison walls. And yes. There's a blessing in that as well. So we really yes. don't know how things are going to turn out in life. But no. we believe God works all things to for good for oh, him. Wow. Yes. So yes. thank you for sharing that. So tell oh. me where you are now in your ministry and, and what you're involved with, maybe what's on the horizon. Ah, well, um, I'm involved right now uh, getting a campaign from uh, Mother's in the uh, with the children incarcerated so i just want to give a word to the mothers and mothers that's going through and uh mothers that you know have uh sons and daughters that incarcerated 
Maybe I can give them a word or give them encouragement to say, hey, you know, just have hope and don't give up on your child. And they're going to make it. So that's what I'm doing, building that now. And then I'm getting ready to go to Africa. We're not going to be who stayed there. So we're going to do, uh, we'll be leaving next month, or, uh, the fall uh, next month. So I'm excited about that. Yes. That's great. And clearly your ministry is a family affair. It sounds like yes, everyone's yes. involved. Yes, everyone's been involved. So that's a blessing to me. Yeah. What's it like traveling with your family to do everything? Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's a blessing because then I, I look at it and I, I've been, you know, I'm thanking God, you know, for my son and my daughter working in ministry and working side by side with my husband and myself. And it's just a blessing because when I think about my son that's incarcerated and I see that yes, God took my look at you, it's just a blessing. So I thank yeah. God. This is it's amazing. I love it. Well, you're doing yes. amazing things. So how can people follow you, connect with you, especially as you work on this ministry for yes. mothers of incarcerated children? They can go on my website, uh, Dr. Brenda Jefferson, uh, um, com, and they can find me on my website and find out all of the things that I'm doing. On my website. Yes. Well, you're absolutely gorgeous inside and Thank out. It's, so it's, it's so just a delight to talk to you. I am really thankful that you took the time to be my guest today for conversations yeah. with Nicole. As yeah. we close, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with my audience? Well, I just want to, those out there that's maybe going through right now or don't know which way to turn, I just want to encourage them that it. We think that, you know, things, trouble's going to last always. Trouble's going to last always. Just keep believing and trusting in God and never give up. That's my word. Beautiful words of wisdom, Dr. Jefferson. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You have been a blessing today. And that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.